Praise if you're happy to be in the house of God on a Sunday morning. I know you could do a better job than that. Everyone get on your feet and give God praise all around the sanctuary. God has blessed us with a new day. This is the day the Lord has made. We've come here to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Well, how many are happy to be in the house of God this morning? Well, amen. It's grateful to see you all on this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. This is a special day. And I just want to inspire you before we get to our praise and worship. You know that God works where there is faith. Amen. If you're wondering where is God working, he's working where there is faith. And we are believers. And I just want to let you know that God is working today. He's working on you today. He's working on you. Today we celebrate that the enemy has been defeated. Amen. And God has risen from the grave. Hallelujah. You know, Deuteronomy says, the Lord your God who is going before you will fight for you as he did for you in Egypt before your very eyes. The interesting thing is today we celebrate that the enemy has been defeated, yet we know that the enemy still makes a lot of noise. It says in the scripture, it says it's like a roaring lion, the enemy makes these noises. And the enemy will roar at you and he'll tell you that you're not going to make it. He'll tell you that you won't be healed. He'll tell you that that door won't open. But I believe that I got some praisers in this house that'll drown out the enemy's noise. Because we believe he has been defeated. Now, if you look around at the natural, what's going on in life, you may think he has won. But we serve a supernatural God. And today, we are lifting up the name of God. So you may feel like odds are against you. But God is saying to you that I'm going before you and I'm fighting for you. I've already won the battle. I've already won the battle. Do you believe it this morning? Well, amen. We are grateful to God that you have come here to worship with us on this Resurrection Sunday. We have the world's greatest praise team on Resurrection Day. And I say it all the time that they're gonna sing some amazing songs and they're gonna sound amazing this Sunday, this Resurrection Sunday morning, but they can't do it alone. Praise team, can you point to who you need the help? We need you. Yeah. So can we all sing praises and lift up the name of God on a Resurrection Sunday together? Yeah. Come on, praise team, lead us this morning. Come on, give God praise all around the sanctuary. Everybody bow before 
praise him. Lift those hands and praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's still alive. He's still alive. That's trash talk. He's dead. He is still alive and well on planet Earth. And he told me that you're going to be all right because he's still here today. I'm just so glad to see all of you here today. Amen. Why don't you give God one last great big hand right now? Can you turn to your neighbor and just wave at your neighbor? And you may go to your seat, and we're going to have our, uh, I think I, amen. You might have me too loud up here, uh, Dwayne. Uh, we're going to get that next song right after the announcements because we need them seats out there. And we're going to invite the kids to go out, but I don't want them to go out until they see the marvelous speeches that they have. So you guys can sit down for just a minute, but I'm going to call you right back up. Amen. Amen. Terrence, you can dance with me today. We're going to dance today, buddy. We had 17,000 hits on that last one. We going for the 40,000. Amen. You must have turned my mic down or something you did. Amen. Watch these kids and the announcements today. Amen. Lights, camera, action.
amen. Our children singing live. Ministries are dismissed at this time. Kids K through 6 can exit to the right of the stage, and all middle and high school students can exit to the left of the stage. Amen. We got to go back to the video. We ain't see the kids. Hold up, hold up, kids. Just stand where you are. Freeze. Freeze, kids. Kids, freeze. 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 Nobody moves. All right, let's see the kids so we can let them go after this. Amen. That was the, I asked Larry, I said, was that a tape of those kids, uh, somebody else singing them songs? They said, no. He said, that was our kids. My goodness, they sound like the pastor. Hey, Amen. We're going to hold the kids, watch it. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. My name is Harper, and the name of my speech is Easter Smiling Faces. When we'd make a face, our mother would say, be careful, it might be that way. Wouldn't it? Be wonderful if that was said, because Easter morning everyone's faces broke. Easter Sunday congregation, smiling faces all of them, greeting old friends and strangers, love and fellowship with them. Hey, we give man. thanks this Easter that God sent Jesus for our love. We give thanks for his life and for his everlasting love. We give thanks he brought salvation. We know he loves us dearly. That's the reason we celebrate this special day yearly. Hey, man, give him a great big hand. My name is Genesis Rivers, and my speech is He is risen. He is risen. Hallelujah. He is not among the dead. Because of him, the end of life, there is no need to dread. Our hope has been rekindled, for he is ever here. Because Christ lives, he conquered all our fear. My name is Corey Avon, and the name of my speech is The Greatest Joys of Easter. Of all the joys that Easter brings of peace and love divine, I think the greatest joy of all is to know that Christ is mine. He fills my heart with hope and cheer, he takes away the gloom. He lifts the sadness from my heart because I've given him room. Though you may live in this old world's goods and live in wealth and pleasure, I recommend Jesus Christ my Lord, the greatest joy without measure. My name is Anaya, and the name of my speech is called, It's the Time. It's the time to dress up, I think you'll agree, for Easter's the time to dress up you see. It's the time to give thanks for all the beauty and worth, all the goodness and kindness there is in the earth. It's the time to sing praises about what God gives. It's the time to tell others that Jesus lives. Okay, the title of my song is My Friend. I have a friend I hope you know you've heard about from long ago. You see him in the trace over the ocean calming seas. This is a special time you see. He rose from the dead for you and for me. What caring about is great and small, he paid the price and full for all. On the cross of Calvary, he set our sins and bound us free. Washing in the blood of the Lamb, God didn't see sin, but he sees him. Thank you, Lord, the all of a friend is there with us to the very end. Rising from the dead for you and for me because I'll have the victory. Chase. My name is Chase. And my name of my speech is Easter Love. Easter Love. No Easter egg, no Easter toy. That's Easter Love for every girl and boy. Ain't not much to say. God bless you good. Happy Easter Day! My name is Samara, and the name of my speech is called God Does Care. Easter means love. God's love for people everywhere. Easter tells us that God really does care. Hi, my name is Maddie Tunter, and this is my speech for New Spirit. Sad and lonely was good fighting, but joy came on Easter Day. Christ the Lord has risen. The stone was rolled away. May you have God's blessing on another Easter morning. May a renewed spirit of each of you be born. Hi, I'm Olivia Patterson. Christians, lift up your eyes. See them from the grave will rise. The 
is over Satan's power. And those in heaven alive this hour. Lovely morning by Helen Kitchen Evans. <laughs> He's the bell for your I am happy too. On this lovely morning, may I welcome you. Let's give our kids a great big hand. Now, kids, you can move. Hey, Amen. All of our kids, we are excusing you to hold up, hold up, this time. hold up. Kids We're not giving that. Hold up. Exit to the right Come on, children. Stage. All and the children and high school students can exit to the left of the stage. Hey, Amen. Let's give them all a great big hand. All of our kids, you're welcome to go to ch children church here and young adult, young teenagers, etc. On the right side. If you want a seat in the back, we have a whole set of seats in the front, and we're going to ask that our ushers will put some seats also on our left side here, on our left side, on the far left side, right side, my right, your left over here. Amen. Let's give God a great big hand praise for you. Amen. Now we're going to have uh, the rest of our announcements. I think it's Ramona's birthday. I thought I saw that, Ramona. Is it your birthday or was that old? Oh, it's not your birthday? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Come on, choir. Happy birthday, Ramona. Happy birthday to you. You're looking so good. Come on back up, choir. Looking so good. You're looking so good. Happy birthday to you. You're married to Rodney. You're married to Rodney. You're married to Rodney, and the Lord is with you. All right, give the pastor a great big hand. We're going to go back to singing it now. Everybody stand on their feet and give God a great big hand praise for this marvelous, marvelous choir today who has come to us from New York City and Atlanta and New Jersey. Come on, choir. Come on, put your hands together and let's go. Oh, you may be seated. Plenty of room up front. If you bring the ushers, bring them up front to the front area for seats. You're okay on the chairs at this point. Yeah. 
Yeah, come on and praise yeah, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good news yeah, this morning. Yeah. He's not dead. Dead. This message. Can you all stand on your feet and just say, He's not dead? Oh, yeah, Jesus. Can you lift your hands up in the air and say, He's not dead? Oh, yeah, say, He is alive forevermore. Hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody ought to say, Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. He's not dead. Yeah. As you bow your heads in the word of prayer, even now, as you bow your heads in a word of prayer even now anybody here to talk with him this morning anybody here to talk with him last week anybody had a conversation with him you've got it too loud anybody had a conversation with him recently he's not dead he's still alive I know because every every day last week I stood in my meditation corner in quietness Flip it back to where it was there. In quietness. And in his presence, he said, everything will be all right. In his presence, he said, you're going to be fine. In his presence, he said, I'm going to take over from here, Larry. In his presence, he said, put it on cruise today. Take your itinerary, throw it out. And take my agenda. Everything was better that day because I followed his orders. As you bow your heads in a word of thanks unto God, I told church this morning that last week was a rough week for us. Tuesday, we were celebrating the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr., commemorating it, rather. Same day, we were in sadness commemorating a president of the United States being indicted. I told the church this morning, this ain't no laughing moment. This is not a hallelujah moment. No. It is a somber, sad moment when your president has to be coming, has to come before the court and be indicted, whether he's innocent or guilty. I know what some of you are saying. Send me back, it's too loud. It's, it, it, the problem is, he's the pre former president, and, he, and it's sad that that happened. I know what you're saying. I told the people this morning, I know who Donald J. Trump is. In the 1980s, he took the Central Park Five boys, 14, 15, 16-year-old kids, and put an ad in the New York Times saying that they're guilty even before they were ever adjudicated. And they were just found out recently that they were all innocent. I know what you're saying. Retribution. Could be. He goes into the same court that those five boys went into. He goes to the same city, New York City, that those five boys were in. But look at how it worked out. As he goes into court to sit with those boys in essence, sitting his case is adjudicated by a black man in a city where there's a black mayor by a police chief that's a black woman and then on Thursday we thought it was over with two state representative of Tennessee and Nashville are basically kicked out of the chambers and said that they are not to come back. It was sad last week. But that's why Jesus died on Calvary. So that he could straighten out the sad things in life and he took upon himself the cross of Calvary. And the book said he died book said that he went into hell so that we would not descend into hell ourselves. Three days later, he said, I will not leave you comfortless.
gets up out of the grave. Hand stretched out and says, whosoever will, whatever the problem is, come unto me and I will give you rest. As you bow your heads in a word of prayer, even now, what's our next song? with us even through this valley of shadows of death we had a hard week last week this nation is in trouble but we have hope in the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ God sometimes we have to go through these things in order to recognize that all of our help comes from you it's in you we live, move, and have our being. We trust you, God. Even when we cannot trace you, we do not always know what's going on around us. But God, we still believe that you sit high and look low and guide our feet wherever we go. You told us that righteousness lifts up a nation sin always drags it back down but we believe that it is your grace that always kicks in at the right time in the right moment of our existence and we just want to pause to say on this Easter Sunday morning that we thank you that you did not forget about us you, you rose from the grave just like you said you could and one day we're going to see you face to face. We're going to shout all over our heavenly place. But in the meantime, God, we pray that you will intercede in the great state of Tennessee. Remind them that if they're wrong, all they have to do is make the confession that there's been a wrong being done. But for those people who are concerned about shootings and death and guns we pray God you will let them know that weeping men do it for a night but joy will come in the morning that somehow you will straighten out the wrong things in the crooked places now oh God for this nation to whom somebody who is going through the air trying to separate us and divide us and put us on this side and that side and over here and over there God we pray that the prayer that your son Jesus prayed for us make us one one nation under God indivisible with liberty justice freedom and love for everybody in Jesus name we pray and all the people of God shouted amen come on choir sing that song for us quickly you may go to your seat Have you heard about Jesus? He died on Calvary. He died to say you and me. He died to set me free. Hey. 
It's springtime at Mount Zion, and it is our belief that wherever you are now, God has something greater for you. We believe in the next generation, and we embrace the generations of old. We mentor, love, and equip people to pursue spiritual growth in a world that is full of challenges, pain, and heartache. For the next three years, we have four goals we're pursuing. Our first goal is to continue to retrofit and renovate the family life and fine arts area for you and our future generations. Reimagining the staging and presentation platform, adding flooring for multi-purpose events like youth sports, basketball, volleyball, and various activities, all while creating flexibility for events like dinners and gatherings for the community. Number two, focus on senior outreach and programming. As people live longer, we want them to grow stronger. Whether it's training a younger generation, sharing wisdom, or recounting God's faithfulness in times of uncertainty, older adults have an important function in the kingdom of God. In the next three years, we intend to equip, support, and promote older adults within our church. Number three, celebrate. After surviving a pandemic, we know that life is precious and God's grace is sufficient. We're celebrating our building of one of the largest food pantry networks in the Southeast suburbs. Also, 20 years ago, we built and financed a $1 million road that gave access to our church building, the community park, and areas for future development. We are now celebrating the elimination of that debt due to your faithful giving. Lastly, we're celebrating the 10-year anniversary of our Children and Youth Church, a revolutionary idea to give the children and teens a place to learn the Word of God while still being able to sit with their family in worship. And goal number four, we are leading an international network of ministries. From Florida to Canada, we are taking the word of God to people of all nationalities and backgrounds. We lead over 100 churches through the leadership of United Pastors in Mission and the Ecumenical Alliance of Ohio. We appreciate your continued support of the vision. We ask that everyone prepares to give toward the ministry above and beyond the regular giving at three times each year, Easter Sunday, July in the summer months, and our December Christmas and year giving. You make the difference. Be sure to look at our website for updates. Mount Zion on the move for Christ. Amen. Let's give God some praise for all that he's doing here at Mount Zion. I'm going to ask if you would stand on your feet and turn your Bibles to the book of Malachi 3, 6 through 12. It's giving time in God's house as we all stand at the attention of God. And we're going to read this text responsibly, even if you're in your cars and even if you're also at home online. We welcome you to turn your Bibles to Malachi 3, 6 through 12. And you can also give through the mzov.org website or through the Givelify app. Let us go into the word of God. The Bible says this. The Bible says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? in tithes and offerings. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now and herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Let's read 12 together. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Will you take a moment to bow your heads in a moment of thankfulness, thoughtfulness, thinking unto God, thanking God for all that he's given you. We know today that all we have and all will ever be is because of the goodness and the graciousness of God. If it had not been for God that was by your side, think about where would you be today? Where would you be? You would not be where you are today because God's grace 
in God's mercy helped you and brought you through. I pray right now that you would just say thank you, Lord. I pray right now that you would just say hallelujah. This is a time to be cheerful when we give. We give because we know that God will bless us with more than if we had kept everything even unto ourselves. Let us go to God in a word of prayer and a word of thanks today. Heavenly Father, we love you. We lift you up on this special Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, where we celebrate the great sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross and how he rose from the grave. What a day to give back to you, knowing and believing that all we have and our future is sealed because of what you've done for us. Heavenly Father, bless the giver as they give today, not grudgingly, but as they give cheerfully. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. I'm going to ask all of those that are bringing a tithe and offering, you can come right now to the tithe and offering baskets. The song says, celebrate the King.
Let us all stand at the attention of God. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. church say amen amen before you see that can you just wave at somebody all around the building just give them a holy wave a, a smile today tell them it's good to see them on this easter sunday morning how many happy to be alive today just say amen how many happy to be in god's house on an easter sunday morning just say hallelujah amen amen if you have a bible with you will you do me a quick favor and turn it to the book of john the book of John chapter 3, verse 17. John chapter 3, verse 17. If you have a Bible with you, say amen. If you got a smartphone, say I got something. Amen. That's my crew. I got something. Amen. John 3, 17. And the Bible says this. The Bible says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Here's the point, the voice version of the text, another great translation says this. It says, God didn't send his son into the world to judge it. Instead, he is here to rescue a world headed towards certain destruction. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and this time. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to hear your word. Father, speak to our mind our body and our soul today. Father, you're the one person that can say a word in our spirit in a mighty and powerful way. Today, Father, I pray that change will happen. Today, Father, I pray for breakthroughs and even healings through your word because there's power in the name of Jesus. We love you. We thank you and lift you up and magnify your name. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Today I want to just take a quick moment to preach and teach from the subject of saved in the nick of time. Saved in the nick of time. You know, this verse we just read in John 3, 17 comes right after one of the most famous uh, chapter verses in the Bible, John 3, 16. And it continues to clarify the manner in which Jesus brings us eternal life. It really clarifies the matter that the truth of the matter is that Jesus is a lifesaver. The great testament and the great truth that I want to share with you today is that the gift of God through Jesus comes to all of those who believe in him. Who believe in him as the way to avoiding the consequences of sin and avoiding separation from God. You know, the gift of God is that all of us have, have access to salvation. So the word of God through the writer John tells us that Jesus did not come into this world to condemn the world because of its sin, but rather to save the world through his life, his death, and his resurrection. See, that's why we celebrate today. Somebody might have it twisted. We celebrate because in this life it's easy to start feeling judged. We celebrate today because it's easy in this life to feel condemned and it's easy in this life to feel guilty. It's easy to sulk in what you did on yesterday. It's easy to feel like you're not enough. It's easy to feel like you're unworthy of, of God's love. It's easy to feel like you're more worthy of judgment. But this verse tells us something that should change our perspective on life. It tells us something very important. It tells us that regardless of who you are or what you've done, you are loved by God. It explains that God is not trying to fill you with guilt or to make your life difficult. In actuality, he wants the best for you and he desires a relationship with you. See, the great truth is that I hope you believe is that he loved us so much that he sent his son to the earth to give us grace and to give us a life that we did not deserve. 
And while it is true that in the Bible you'll learn that Jesus exposes also the darkness of the world, it's also equally true that anyone who believes in him and anyone who follows him will experience this awesome experience of being saved in the nick of time. And if there's anything you want to be, if there's any goal that you should want to reach before the end of your life, before any other goal, you should, before anything else, you should want to be saved. Because one of the benefits of being saved is that saved people uh, get to keep something that the world doesn't provide and the world can't take away from you. Truth of the matter is saved people, people who connect with Jesus Christ, get the benefit of keeping their joy if they so choose. Now what does that mean? What does that mean to keep your joy? Well, let me start here. God knew that the modern world was going to steal your joy. God knew that the modern world was going to try to steal your joy. God knew that the world wants you to be bitter. God knew that the world wants you to be resentful. God knew that the world wants you to be on edge. God already knew that people were going to be the way that they are on today. He already knew about the temptations. He already knew about the roadblocks and the challenges and the choices uh, around you and the places that want to take you away from him that you shouldn't really go. He, he, we, if we could be clear with each other even on this morning, I'm sure you would agree with me that we live in a world with a few problems. We live in a world with some problems. And the first problem and the first joy killer in your life is that we live in a world with too many choices. We live in a world with too many choices. Let me pause right there. Let me show you what, what, what life looks like. If you can imagine me with, uh, for a moment, imagine, and we can put that on the screen. Imagine standing in a hallway lined with doors. Imagine standing in a hallway lined with doors. And the hallway extends to infinity. And you're told that behind each and every door is a prize. Now, while you can open as many doors as you want, you can only choose one prize to take home. And once you choose a prize, you can't open any more doors. Now here's the dilemma. You may find a prize behind a door that you like, but who's to say behind the next door that the prize behind that door isn't 20% better? Then you think to yourself, you should probably open the next door and maybe that prize will be better. But, but maybe the prize even further down the hallway, that prize is a thousand percent better. You, you should probably open that door too. See, that's the problem with our world. We've got too many doors to open. And we have the fear of missing out because there's so many doors that we can open in our world. We've, we're faced with the illusion of infinite choice in our careers, in, a, in our relationship, in our everyday life, we hold on to the false hope that perfection is waiting just around the corner. And so we quickly trick ourselves into assuming that our hallway is infinite like the picture. And as if we're always going to have time to explore all the options and explore all the possibilities. But the truth is, in life, is that we don't have infinite time. We're actually finite beings. We all have an expiration date, meaning with everything, even in life, there is a season. And one day, the season will run out. So while the world wants you to explore all the doors that are possible in the hallway, all the possibilities that there is, there's only one door that leads to a blessed life. So that's why we need to reframe our thinking instead of looking at life as an infinite amount of choices, instead of looking down the halls of life at all the many doors, we need to open the right door and keep the other one shut. Jesus said this in Revelations 3.20, if you're a note taker, he said, here I am. He said, I stand at the door and he says, I knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, he said, I will come in and I will eat with that person and them with me. You see, the world wants you to think that being settled on a choice, being settled on one open door is a bad thing. But in the kingdom of God, being settled about something is a good thing. Being settled on something will bring you something the world can't give to you and the world can't take away from you. Being settled will, will bring you joy to your life. 
joy that nobody can take away from you. See, that's the joy that comes when you turn your life over to Jesus Christ. See, that's what being saved is all about. It's about making a decision. It's about a decision to take away the stress of too many choices that ultimately won't matter in the long run and opening the right door. Again, our text says this. It says, Jesus didn't die and come back to life to judge you. The Bible says he wants to rescue you from these destructive options and choices. He wants to forgive you. And most importantly, here's a good point. He wants to protect you. See, Easter Sunday morning should remind you that if you follow Jesus Christ, that means you're protected. Let me give you an example to help you understand the kind of protection that you need in your life. There was this kid in my class by the name of Jacob, and he was smaller than everybody else. And I'll never forget him because today, Jacob is actually bigger than everybody else. But, but back then, young Jacob, Jacob, he was the smallest kid in the class. And everybody, everybody used to try to bully Jacob. And after a while, Jacob got smart, and he became my friend. Actually, Jacob became my best friend. Now, his relationship with me was genuine, but it also was strategic. I took him as my little brother, and, and he took me on like a big brother. And, and see, he knew if he was cool with me, and, and, I, and I was a little bigger than him, a little stronger, and I played football and baseball and wrestling and all the sports, and he knew if he was hanging with me and my friends, nobody was going to mess with him. So when we'd be out playing in the neighborhood, whenever the bullies would come around and they would try to mess with him, he'd make sure that he stayed close to me and my friends. Because as long as he was with me, they never were going to mess with him. He even started to milk it a bit. He'd be hanging out with us. And as long as he was with, was with our crew, he could, he could run his mouth and he would stick his tongue out at the other kids and he would laugh at them and everything else. And he got so comfortable when he was with us. And the reason, again, he could be so comfortable was because he knew that if he stayed close to us, he stayed close to this group of friends, nobody would be successful if they tried to harm him. And see, all we need to do is we've got to take note out of Jacob's playbook is that it's not about you, it's about who you're connected to. And that's what being saved is all about. It's about staying close to the one who can save you from the enemy. See, the truth of the matter is, does anybody know about the enemy? See, the enemy wants you to doubt God's love. The enemy wants you to feel like all hope is gone. The enemy wants you to think that it's over. The enemy wants you to throw in the towel. The enemy doesn't want you to feel forgiven. The enemy doesn't like that you're in church on today. The enemy wants you to feel like you're farther away from God. All the while, God is trying to say, I want you to be close to me. God is saying, I love you. God is saying, all hope is not gone. God is saying, it's not over. God is saying, don't give up. God is saying, you are forgiven. God is saying, I got some plans for you. God is saying, I've got a future for you. God is saying, I'm going to heal you. I don't know how many folk I got in this audience that need to be healed, but God is saying, I want to heal you. God is saying, I want to deliver you. He's saying, you are a conqueror. He's saying you are victorious. He's saying I do have a future for you. Otherwise, you would not be alive today. And the good news is God sent his son Jesus just to prove it to you. You know, just to make this a little clearer, I remember one day I was traveling with my son. And a bee had got inside of our car. And he was scared, and he said, Dad, what are you going to do? And so quickly I started trying to swat the bee, and, and I caught the bee with my hand. And my son said, oh, he's trapped now. And, and so he felt like he was going to be okay. And, and then I opened my hand, and, and the bee started buzzing and flying around all over again. And he started to be afraid again. He was frightened. And I, I looked at my son. And what I did was I, I showed him my hand. And I, I told my son, I said, son, you don't have to be afraid anymore. I showed him that the bee was no longer effective. 
the bee no longer had the capability of stinging us anymore because the bee stinger was now in my hand. And I told him there's nothing that that bee can do to us now because the bee has lost his sting. And see, that's the message that I want to give you on today, on this Easter morning. That's why we need to celebrate our Savior. And that's why we need to make sure that you're saved. Because when Jesus died on the cross for your sins, and when he rose from the grave on the third day, the word of God teaches that he took the sting out of death. And he replaced it with eternal life. So if you know Jesus, you've got access to life beyond tomorrow. If you know Jesus, trouble don't last always. If you know Jesus, healing is on the way. If you know Jesus, the challenges of our todays don't stand a chance for the favor that's on tomorrow. Is there anybody in this place that knows Jesus? If you know Jesus, you don't have to live in a pity party. If you know Jesus, you don't have to stay depressed. If you know Jesus, you don't have to live a broken life. Because what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. If you're saved, this is what you can do. You can touch Jesus. If you're saved, you can touch him. The question is asked, why can you touch him? Because the Bible says that he's not dead. He's alive. You can just look back over your life. You've got all the evidence in the world that he's alive. Who do you think woke you up this morning? I hope you don't think you woke yourself up this morning. I hope you don't think he's the reason that you're not in a hospital today. I hope you don't think you're the reason that you're in your right mind. I hope you don't think that you paid your bills all by yourself. I hope you don't think you drove your car safely here by yourself. It was nothing but the grace of God. It was nothing but the blood of Jesus. It was nothing but what God did in your life. The only reason that you made it from A to B is because Jesus is alive. And just like, just like the woman in the Bible with the issue of blood, he said, who touched me? Who touched me? She touched him and she was healed. The truth of the matter is you can touch him even on today. You can touch him. How? How can I touch Jesus? You can touch him through your faith. You can touch him through your prayers. And you can touch him through your praise. Are there any praises here today? Come on, are there any praises here today? Praise destroys walls. Praise tears down the walls of destruction. Praise tears down the walls of failure. Praise tears down the walls of sadness. Praise will break negativity. Praise will build things up. When I start to praise, I close one door and I open the right door to Jesus Christ. Can you give him some praise right now? Come on, stand on your feet and let's praise him. Even today, the Bible says that God inhabits the praise of his people. Can somebody touch Jesus by again giving God some praise? Thank him for saving your life even on today. Will you bow your head? That's what today is all about. It's about being saved in the nick of time. It's about making sure that you're saved. I want to say today, if there's somebody in this place that is not saved, I want you to make the decision even on today. If you want to be saved today, I want you to raise that hand high. If you want to be saved today, I want you to raise your hand high. If you need saving in your life, you talk to God right now and you say, Lord, save me even on today. Somebody in this place, you need to be saved from a situation. Maybe there's a challenge that you feel that you want God to save you from. We believe today that Jesus wants to save your life from destruction. Save your life from the challenges. Save your life from the pit of despair even today. I offer Christ to you. All you have to do is ask him to come into your heart and to save you. Tell him that you believe that he died on the cross for your sins. 
and that he rose from the grave on the third day. Ask him to be Lord and leader over your life today. If you need special prayer today, I want to pray for you even on today. I pray also, if this is the first time that you ask Christ to be Lord and leader over your life, I want you to fill out that card in the pew. I want you to tell us about it. I want you to put it in that receptacle as you leave out the door or leave it at the welcome desk, the connect desk, right in the foyer. And we want to share with you the next steps today. You need to be saved today. If you want God to save you from something, just raise your hand right now. Let's talk to God. If you want God to save you in your situation, if you need God, if you need special prayer, just raise your hand all over the building as we lift up God, even today. Raise that hand high today with me. I see hands all over the building. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for your tender mercies. We thank you, God, for your unfailing love. We thank you for providing us a way to be reconciled unto you. Thank you for enlightening our hearts and thanking, thank you, God, that we can say yes to your presence, yes to your will, and yes to your way. Lord, you're great. Lord, you're powerful. Lord, you are worthy of all of our praise. Father, today we leave this place with joy in our hearts. We leave this place with a praise in our mouth, knowing that you are awesome. You are most high and you are the great King of kings and Lord of lords. We believe in your life-saving power as you were crucified, but you rose from the grave on the third day. And you're coming back one day. So thank you, God, for saving us even on today. We thank you. And so today, we commit ourselves to the Lord. We commit ourselves to following Jesus. We pray this prayer in the precious name of Jesus. We all pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Come on, give God some praise today. The song says, Melody from Heaven.